This is Keith Gandarillis with HRP Associates, and this is how you set up a bladder pump for low flow sampling. This is the equipment you'll need for setting up a bladder pump. First, you'll need your bladder. When you got them, make sure it has a grip plate and a bladder inside of them. Um, this one is empty, so we'll place a new bladder on it. So it has a bladder, it just pushes on. Just push the bladder on. Make sure it gets over the barb. Chamber comes up and on and just twists on. Remove the top piece. Do not lose that. You will need a grip plate for the tubing. Make sure your O-rings are in there because if there's no O-rings, they're gonna leak. It has top stamped into it. So put the top facing the top, plate on. twist the top on. Now your bladder's all set up and ready for use. You also need an airline to go from your compressor to the controller and a second airline to go from the controller to the tubing on the pump. You'll need a compressor. This is a QED 3020. Just runs off 12 volts DC, which we have here. And then our pump controller, which is a QED MP10. So we use bladder pumps when the depth of water is 27 feet or greater. Shallower than that in Connecticut, we're allowed to use peristaltic pumps. Um, deeper wells, we need a submersible pump. So you can either have a bladder pump or a different type of submersible. We like the QED Sample Pros because they're easy to clean and decon and change the bladder out. If you are sampling for PFAS, make sure you do not have the Teflon bladder. You use the poly bladders. All right, so now we're going to set our pump into our well. Again, make sure you have the bladder in the grab plate in there. Um, we're gonna set this pump at mid water column or mid screen, depending on your well application. First thing we're gonna do is tie a rope off to it because you don't wanna lose the pump down the well. So that is our little safety line. So it has a little piece there to tie it off upon. And then on the top of our pump, it has a W and an A, water line, air line. The basic operation of the bladder pump is, is it sucks water in through your intake compresses the bladder inside here that's filled with water and pushes the water up to the surface. So we'll need to connect our water lines now that we have our safety line on, our water and air lines. These you could just slide right into it. So this will be our water line, push it in, it'll go past the O-ring and sit in maybe a quarter inch or so. And then your air line does the same thing. So now your pump's set up and ready to be deployed. All right, so we're deploying the pump. All right, so now we have our pump set to their set depth. We will cut our tubings for our air and water. So that one is our air line. And we'll connect our air fitting. It's just a compression fitting. Just slides in. And then you usually leave the water one a little longer so you can go into your containers. And we will suspend our pump here by tying it off on our screwdriver at our correct set depth. Done with our tubing. Now that we have our pump deployed, we need to set up our compressor and our pump controller. So our compressor just runs off 12 volts DC. So we just have your positive to your positive on your battery. Negative, negative. From here, there's a supply air line. We'll connect our air hose from here. Going into our pump controller. Finally, our air line that we already connected previously to the air out on the compressor. Turn the pump on, the pressure on, and it builds pressure. From here, we need to know where your pump's set at. So say our pump is set at 40 feet. On our compressor controller here, it has a dial gauge, and on the outside is foot. So if we're at 50 feet, you need to go around, put this gauge at 60 to 70 feet on there, and that'll give you a flow rate close to 200 mils a minute. So we'll set this one up. So you have a dial to increase your pressure, up and down. And then it just has a cycle button. So when you get your pressure dialed in, you hit your cycle button, and it'll do a countdown. 
So that's 10 seconds of refill time, five seconds of discharge time. And we'll wait for our water to come up the grade. And there you go, you see we have our water coming up. We have a red-brown colored water. So to adjust your flow rate, if you have want to make major adjustments, you could use the, the knob to increase or decrease pressure. If you increase pressure, we'll get a higher flow rate. If you decrease it, you get a lower flow rate. If you only want to make minor adjustments, you could use the up and down arrows. So you have the 11 and a half seconds here would be our refill time, the three and a half seconds is our discharge time. So we want a higher flow rate, we would increase our discharge time to say six and a half seconds and a refill to eight and a half. So you have more seconds of pushing water out. So now that we have our flow rate set for our desired for this well, we would just go right into our low flow uh, equipment, our YSI or Reva or whatever you guys prefer. Um, and run your low flow parameters until the well stabilizes. And at that point, you could disconnect and start filling your uh, containers for your well. And that's the end of uh, sampling. When you post sampling, we shut it all down, pull the pump, and decon it. Uh, pull the part like I showed earlier in the video and clean all the parts. Replace the bladder, replace the grab plate, and you're set to go for another well. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs>